Support for WCBU's On Deck comes from Jaguar Land Rover Peoria on Allen Road, offering complimentary pickup and delivery for service with every new vehicle purchase, including the Land Rover Defender. Details at jaguarlandroverpeoria.com. This is WCBU, Peoria Public Radio. Experts are working on the best strategies for dealing with childhood trauma. That's just one of the things you want to hear about to start your day for Monday, May 13th. I'm Colin Shope, and this is WCBU's On Deck. First on deck today, child custody is among the most common legal issues an estranged couple might need to hammer out in divorce proceedings. But what about the pets? As it turns out, there's a law for that too in Illinois. WCBU's Tim Shelley explains. Up until a few years ago, Illinois law treated pets like any other personal property a couple might co-own. But that's changed. Terry Ross is executive director of Illinois Legal Aid Online. It was coming up over and over again um, in court uh, because pets are, you know, more than property, right? They are a part of our family. The Dissolution of Marriage Act now requires a pet's well-being to be taken into consideration. It's similar to um, the best interests of the child standard, right, which exists in the parental responsibilities laws. She says a person who owned a pet before the marriage has a better claim for sole possession than one that joined the family when a couple was wed. A person who can show they can provide the most stable environment for the animal also has a stronger chance of getting custody. But Ross says it's also not uncommon for divorcing spouses to ultimately agree to split time with the pet between them. For WCBU, I'm Tim Shelley. Here are some other stories we're following in the WCBU newsroom. Natural Fiber Welding is taking out a $3 million loan from Peoria County to fund the purchase of new manufacturing equipment in the Warehouse District. And Governor Pritzker's plan to create a new state agency for early childhood programs is moving forward after passing out of the Illinois House of Representatives. Plus, a Lake County judge is ordering the owner of Republican-favoring websites to remove sensitive information about Illinois voters from its platforms. Find more of these stories and all the details at wcbu.org. Advocates, experts, medical professionals, and service providers are collaborating on the best ways to prevent and respond to childhood trauma. A two-day educational conference in East Peoria served as an opportunity for people to network and build relationships toward a common goal. WCBU's Joe Deacon reports. The Center for Prevention of Abuse hosted the Light 2024 conference at the Paradise Hotel with lectures, exhibitions, and breakout sessions on topics such as child development, abuse and exploitation, and therapeutic intervention. Carol Myrna is the center's chief executive officer. We know that childhood trauma casts a very long shadow, and many times when childhood trauma is unresolved, it can be uh, violence that result, it can be uh, mental health issues that result. Dr. Nadine Burke-Harris, one of the conference's keynote speakers, is the former Surgeon General of California and the founder of the Center for Youth Wellness. She says it's critically important to build partnerships in assisting families in need. One of the things we recognize is that childhood trauma is a public health crisis. And so when we look at that, we want to be focused on prevention, early detection, and early and effective intervention. And when we do that, we see that we can transform outcomes. Approximately 200 people attended the two-day conference in person, with many more participating virtually. Burke Harris says childhood adversity increases the risk for nine of the top ten leading causes of death in the U.S. That places a greater emphasis on the need for detection and prevention of adverse childhood experiences, or ACEs. Abuse, neglect, or growing up in a household where a parent is struggling with substance dependence, mental health disorder, or if there's intimate partner violence, violence in the home. I think one of the things that we've seen is that many of those things increased during the COVID-19 pandemic. And now we are really at a point where putting in place systemic solutions is absolutely critical. 
Author, activist, and child sexual abuse survivor Aaron Murren served as the keynote speaker on the second day. Murren is a driving force behind Aaron's Law, a personal body safety education measure that has been passed in 38 states, including Illinois. Murren says the law is a key piece in addressing childhood trauma. What Aaron's Law does, it mandates that each school provide a lesson every year to uh, school-age kids up to high school um, on body safety. So that's child sex abuse prevention. And the lessons we teach are centered around the message of tell someone to stop, run away, tell someone you trust, and be believed. Myrna says the Center for Prevention of Abuse deals with many different types of childhood trauma. We see a lot of sexual abuse and sexual assault, but that's with purpose. That's one of our core responsibilities. We see children that are victims of human trafficking. One in four victims of human trafficking are children. So we see domestic violence. We see young people who, 26% of, of all young people experience or witness a traumatic event by the age of four. So this just reaches across every sector of our community. And abuse doesn't discriminate. It's not based on poverty. It's not based on race or religion. Burke Harris says one of the biggest challenges is a belief that the problem of childhood trauma is too large to solve. Well, I think that view that it is too big of a mountain to climb is the biggest hurdle that we need to overcome. I think recognizing that we can do this we have it made these investments in California. We've taken a public health approach, and we are seeing that is it is improving care and improving outcomes. And it is time for that work to be replicated all across the country. Burke Harris says not doing more to get a better handle on childhood trauma is too costly. The CDC just released a report that showed that adverse childhood experiences cost Illinois $650 billion dollars per year. Nationally, it's costing the U.S. $14.1 trillion per year. So we can't afford not to be investing in systems to cut adverse childhood experiences. Myrna says the need for more funding and resources toward abuse prevention is constant. For WCBU's On Deck, I'm Joe Deacon. Now, before we let you go, tonight is the regular meeting of the Peoria Public Schools Board of Education. The open session starts at 6.30 p.m. in the DLC boardroom of the district's administration building. A new newcomer's curriculum for the high schools and grade school roofing projects are on the agenda. And that's all for today. You can subscribe to WCBU's On Deck podcast on the NPR app, Apple, or Spotify.